Well, I'm Bill McGarvey, and uh, I, it's truly my pleasure to be here to introduce Tom Clanton as a pillar of the American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Society. My only disclosure is that Tom asked me to do this at least monthly over the course of the last several months, and just to make sure that it was okay. He didn't want to infringe on my time, which he felt was too valuable to, to contribute to this, but I'm happy to do it. It is truly my privilege to have the opportunity to introduce Thomas Oscar, Tommy Clanton. Tom was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 1950. His family got him to Texas as soon as they could, which is a joke and a bumper sticker only Texans would understand. Tom initially attended the United States Air Force Academy, and then after a medical discharge, matriculated at Rice University as both a student and an athlete. And this would have an enormous effect on his professional life for decades to come. Tom then performed his internship and residency at the University of Texas, San Antonio, and completed fellowships in both foot and ankle surgery, as well as knee surgery with icons Roger Mann and John Fagan Jr. respectively, mastering the subtleties and nuances of both. He's been involved in any number of professional organizations including the ones that you see here, the Academy, the AOA. He was professor and chairman at the University of Texas, along with these, as well as a long list of these, being team physician for the Houston Texans, Houston Rockets, and Rice University Owls. But the common theme has always been his passion and dedication for foot and ankle surgery, as you can see from the plethora of activities and leadership positions that he's held within the AOFAS, as well as being a liaison to our sister organization, the American Academy. Additionally, Tom has felt a deep sense of community and service. He's received professionally involved in peer-reviewed publications, book chapters, podium presentations, invited lectureships, and visiting professorships. He's performed consulting and video production, all at an elite level. He's written landmark articles exposing risks, dispelling myths, and reporting outcomes, as you can see here with his specialty topics, turf toe, chronic leg pain in athletes, interference fixation for soft tissue, total ankle replacement with the STAR system, and ankle ligament anatomy and pathology, to name only a few. And in fact, we reviewed one of his publications as recently as last month at our resident fellow journal club. Yet I've always been intrigued as to what makes the man. How has he achieved this iconic status? Somewhere along the path to professional development, Tom found time to court and marry his lovely bride, Kay, and they've been together for over 52 years. They welcomed two daughters, Laura and Kelly, but what is it makes Tom Clanton? He's clearly a surgeon and scientist. He loves the sports and outdoors. He is a world-class nap taker. But most importantly, he's a friend to many and gentleman to all. Seen here with his old college teammate and former practice partner, Leland Winston, college trainer, Alan Eggert, and our partner, Kevin Koop and to the right, pictured in the midst of his protégés in his AOFAS past president's photo. What I do know is that there is clearly something that draws people to Tom. Magnetism, admiration, and undying respect is what make acquaintances, colleagues, and friends alike want to gravitate toward him. But despite his passion and commitment to the foot and ankle, and his commitment to lifelong dedication to the AOFAS, both of which are unquestioned, colleague, <coughs> excuse me, the thing that really drives Tom is his family and his faith. I'm so proud to be asked to introduce this man and present him as he is so rightfully and fittingly named a pillar of our society. And I'd like to offer my personal thanks for the role model he has and continues to be for me as a physician, as a surgeon, as a scientist and researcher, but most importantly, as a husband, father, and friend. This is not solely my own not-so-humble opinion. I solicited opinions in a word from various society members and friends, and this is a common narrative, but not an exhaustive list. To emulate Tom, you must at the very least evoke some of these qualities and attributes, but there's really so much more. Simply stated, 
It boils down to this. He is a devoted family man, adoring husband, and dedicated father with unparalleled passion, commitment, and dedication to his craft and his profession. Congratulations, Tom, on being named as a pillar of the AOFAS. No one is more deserving, and I'm honored and privileged to have been involved in this very small personal way. My only wish would be that you could be here so I could give you a good, strong embrace and really thank you personally for everything that you've done, not only for me, but for everyone here. Thanks, Tom. So as you all know, uh, Dr. Clinton unfortunately is uh, sick at home with COVID. I want to assure everybody he's doing well. I talked to him last night. Um, as you can see, he's a giant in the field. Um, but what really I think separates him is his kindness, his generosity, and his compassion. And it's my honor to accept this award on his behalf. And I'd also like to thank him personally for everything he's done for me. And I know he's touched many of you out here as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Tom, sorry, Tom, if you're listening, we really appreciate uh, everything you've done, as uh, said. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, introducing Charlie Saltzman, um, who everybody knows, and uh, going to come on up uh, with Mike Coughlin, our next uh, 2023 pillar. It's a true honor to, uh, to recognize the contributions of Mike Coughlin, who I believe is a pillar of our world in foot and ankle surgery, and I think um, many, many of us know that. Um, he grew up in Idaho, and here he is, a um, budding young fisherman. He's from where the star is, which is Boise. It's a nice place to be from. Um, and he was determined to get back there. He, was a, he had a Daniel Boone hat, which was the best thing you could own when, if you were his age at that time. It was a prized possession. He's, I think he needs one now, too. Um, he, he got married to a wonderful woman, Kirsten. Uh, this is a photograph from their 74, 1974 um, wedding where he was wearing the best clothes you could possibly buy back then. And um, they had two wonderful daughters, Erin and Lizzie, and Erin's here tonight, today, and it's fantastic to have her. He went to do his residency at, at um, UCSF, and so there he met Roger Mann and pursued him and, and basically talked him into doing a fellowship with him. It was the first fellow maybe in the United States, and it was the first fellowship, and this is a picture with Henry DeVries, who many of you may know of. He was the original author, based on his own work, of what was, at that time, Surgery of the Foot. He wrote two editions. Then Vern Inman took over the work and had Roger Mann help him with the third edition. Vern Inman, I think, yeah, Vern Inman is very well known to us who know biomechanics of the foot and ankle. And then Roger Mann took it over and did the fourth and the fifth editions alone. And then later, um, I'll try to explain, Mike got involved with that. Early on, he was recognized for his creativity, his drive, and he was put on the board at a very young age. This is a photograph when he was put on the board. But before that, he was the program chair for two summer meetings and I think a winter meeting as well. They liked his energy. They didn't know what to do with him, though, because he was, intent, he was intent on making the society more than a society of 50 old white men. He, uh, did, he, one of the uh, summer programs, I missed this, was at Sun Valley. It was before I was a, re a fellow. 
uh, he hung, almost hung, the president, Dr. Ken Johnson, who is being held up here in Sun Valley, but fortunately they, the, um, the, the people who were going to hang him got scared of his mother, so they decided not to hang him. Um, and he was the president in our, at our meeting in Anaheim. This was the first time I saw him um, ever and uh, was really, really taken with his, his uh, talk at the time. He put this slide up. AOFS is not an exclusive society. And I remember looking at it and thinking a lot about that and thinking, how great is that? Most of the subspecialist societies were close at that time. He made the pitch that we need to educate each other, we need to be better, and then he um, initiated a lot of changes within the AOFES. For example, the bylaws, he rewrote them so they're gender neutral. He initiated our work that became the AMA uh, connection for uh, the society, the accreditation, ACCME accreditation process for our meetings, uh, the advanced course meeting. At the time, we had a, a general course in uh, office care. He initiated that, the sports meeting, and uh, many educational um, outreach and an outreach for um, orthopedics to be recognized as a provider of foot and ankle care, which seems crazy now, but it was very important to have a public-facing um, group. And so that was an incredibly productive year for us. It was a transition year for the society. And then in the next decade, Roger Mann uh, uh, um, allowed him to help edit the sixth edition. And then if you look closely on the seventh edition, Roger put Mike's name first. I think Roger's getting tired of writing the textbook by then. And the Roger Mann Award was established by the society around 1994 in honor of the contributions of Dr. Mann. It's the highest award you can receive at this meeting for a clinical research paper. And here is the um, second recipient of the award. And he's, he's, um, he's won, Mike Coughlin's been rewarded this three times in the last 29 years. So that's, I think, reflective of some of his contributions to the field. With Dr. Takakura and others, he um, helped develop and start the International Federation of Foot and Ankle Societies. Here he's president, I think it was in San Francisco, with Dr. Takakura. And Aaron and Lizzie are a little older and a little better dressed. And uh, he kept his close relationship with his mentor, Dr. Mann. And here they are. I don't know why they're, they're on the boat, because it looks like they're in one inch of water, but OK. And in 1998, the two of them, who had, in my mind, the most political capital in the foot and ankle world, decided that it was time for us to look again at total ankle replacements in this country. And so they looked around and decided the star ankle was the one they wanted to use on their patients, and they promoted total ankle replacement in this country. Before that, only Frank Alvine, Ted Hansen, Roy Sanders, and a few others were doing a, a few ankle replacements. And after they decided to do that, the world changed for total ankles in the US. I was fortunate to f get to know them through being asked to help edit the seventh edition. And then Bob Anderson helped edit the eighth edition, which was then titled Man's Surgery of the Foot and Ankle. And I'm told that at this meeting, uh, there's a new edition of the book that Andrew Haskell uh, championed called Coughlin and Man's Surgery of the Foot and Ankle, which is totally fitting. It's a great book. Um, they've, one, of the, one of the pieces that's clear is, is Mike Coughlin is very loyal to the people that he respects and loves. And he's maintained a close relationship with his mentor since 1978. Um, and, and Roger Mann is here as well today. So this uh, young man who was not a very good fisherman is now in retirement. He's a hell of a lot better fisherman than he was then. He's got a bigger family now. This is his beautiful family outside, I think, Boise. Um, and he's still happily married to Kirsten. And uh, this tree behind, to the si side of her has um, 
a little engraving in it. I don't know if he put it in in 74, but it's, it's pretty impressive to me. But I want to fi finish, actually, I'm going to go back. I want to finish by um, pointing out one more thing. In approximately 1988, uh, or not, he decided that the best person in the society to be the program chair was Francesca Thompson. And he also decided that we needed to promote women in our society. And so he made her program chair, which was a very unusual move at that point in time. And he supported her completely. And then she got put on uh, the presidential line uh, soon thereafter. So he's part of tonight, today's celebration of, of Tom Clanton, of his career, of Roger Mann, and I think of Francesca Thompson. Thank you, Mike, for all you've done for us. Yeah. Much. Well, there's it on. There we go. Thank you very much. All right, I'd now like to uh, invite Dr. Jonathan Deland and uh, Francesca Thompson's family. Um, invite Thompson, her son, Sarah, her daughter in law, and Zach, her grandson, who will uh, be coming up to honor her contribution to our society. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. And I'd have to say to Mike Coughlin, um, you picked the right woman. So. Yeah, I, have to, I have to get it to go. Yeah, yeah, ah, there, green, there we go. go split, Perfect. Split. You can go back one. Yeah, I'm going to go back one. See here. There you go. Perfect. So, um, why do we talk about our members of the past? Aren't they just in the past? Um, I don't think they are in the past. Um, they can inspire us. Uh, they can make us better. Uh, and uh, they deserve to be recognized. So Francesca Thompson, um, who life was cut too short, did an amazing amount in her life, <laughs> her short life. Um, I happen to be Perfect. Thing. Yeah, I happen to be uh, uh, her first uh, f uh, fellow, and, uh, and and got to know her well. <laughs> but who was she? She was a strong contributor to our society. She was someone who I witnessed uh, worked tirelessly uh, to make uh, things better. She certainly had the passion, uh, and she certainly. Uh, just had the energy and, um, and was a nice person to boot. Her background and achievements, pretty interesting. She actually started as a social worker, okay? So she didn't go to medical school after college. Uh, um, she actually had, had, then had children, uh, but then decided she wanted to be a doctor. Uh, so she did her, her courses to complete her pre-med requirements at night in her spare time went to Cornell Medical School, and graduated AOA, um, just to give you a sense of her. Um, she then uh, became, ended up becoming a, a resident um, at HSS. Uh, and, and being Francesca, uh, she actually, uh, she was, uh, a, 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 she reorganized the residency program. And even one of the attendings at HSS commented about her, she was one of the most dynamic persons uh, I have ever met. Um, she was one of the first two women residents at HSS, so she had a lot of um, uh, firsts in her life. And, and there she is as an HSS resident, uh, just smiling away, um, beaming, uh, and full of energy. Uh, so she was an outstanding member of our organization. 
Uh, so she got involved early uh, with our organization and, um, and, 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 uh, and during her entire life never left uh, uh, working for this organization. She was a member of the board of directors uh, of the AOFAS for seven years. Uh, she was elected second vice president. Uh, she was in the presidential line and she actually did much of this and this is an incredible thing. Uh, while fighting a, a really tough disease, multiple myeloma, which she was diagnosed with relatively early in her years of practice, not just late. Uh, but that didn't stop her for quite, quite a while. So, um, uh, you know, here she is uh, at her desk uh, and, um, uh, you know, intent in, in her work. Um, and this was probably at a time when she she already had the disease. Of course, being Francesca, she then got involved in another organization, um, the International Myeloma Foundation. She served on its board of directors, as well as the AOFAS, and received the Outstanding Patient Service Award from the foundation, because she, she worked with patients, she got involved in society, uh, uh, trying to um, uh, help patients and, and, and research. She passed away um, at the age of 51, while still in practice, still giving uh, to those societies she was involved with. So what was she like as a person? I was a fellow, so I can tell you, I can tell you my first and lasting impression. A fine human being um, who was a dynamic contributor to whatever she was involved with. Um, she was about doing things right, but she was about getting it done, um, and, uh, and, and, and got it done. Um, but to quote from her uh, JBJS obituary, she was kind yet firm. She, she invited my son to her house and staying overnight with her son. Uh, she just uh, always uh, uh, you know, was, was looking out. And she, she was intelligent without being con condescending. She wasn't someone of great energy energy who just, uh, you, know, uh, you know, lived through her ego uh, too much. Um, she was very accessible um, and easy to talk to. Um, so here, I, I, a picture of her that I like, because I, I hope you can get a sense uh, of, of, of her. Uh, she's just beaming here. She's being Francesca uh, and uh, just a, a wonderful person uh, in many ways. So, uh, we're lucky to have her family here today. Um, where, where do they go? They're, oh, they're down here. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, so, where the, oh, they're right here. <laughs> See, what do I know? I gotta wake up up here. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, so <laughs> this is, this is uh, uh, his wife, Sarah. Okay, uh, and Sarah is a doctor, a, an internist. Uh, this is, uh, um, Francesca's grandson, Zachary, uh, who's a uh, energetic and with it 11-year-old. And uh, this is her son, James Thompson, who's an oncologist, interesting enough, uh, specializing in leukemia. Uh, so uh, so there, there are some good genes that I think got passed down here, a lot of good genes. Um, so I just want to close by saying this. <clears throat> we can learn from her uh, as a steadfast and dynamic contributor. We can do that in our own lives and have examples of people like this. And she's certainly one who, with all travels and firsts and being first woman resident and, <laughs> and, you know, and getting myeloma and, and, and just not stopping. <laughs> and I'm very proud, and I think we should all be proud, that actually our society named her president, something she didn't live to, to achieve, and that it was just her short life that, uh, that stopped her from being president, uh, named her president posthumously within a year of her early death. Thank you, and thank you for the family being here today. It means a lot to us.